Welcome, everyone, and a happy Women's Day 2023. Um, we are so excited to be here with you guys today and kicking off our first digital fashion innovator series with you on LinkedIn Live. So we move closer to you guys, to our audience. And yeah, I want to welcome you to this special session today. My name is Marie Bastian. I'm the CEO and founder of World of Mesh, and I'm your host for today's session. And yeah, this new era of digital fashion is just bringing together so many amazing talents from all around the globe. And we are here to share your story, to um, inspire a whole generation of uh, yeah, new 3D um, uh, enthusiasts and creators out there and to celebrate you guys on your way because there's so many people doing amazing stuff out there. And yeah, this brings me to my guest for today. Um, um, I'm really excited to have Nova Lorraine with us. Hi, Nova. Thanks so much for Hi. joining us. So happy to be here. Absolutely. It's an absolute honor and pleasure to have you on today. Um, like I said, especially on uh, International Women's Day. Um, and I'll just give a quick introduction if that's good with you. So Nova is named Top 100 Women of the Future. She is a Jamaican-born award-winning fashion designer, a founder, and an author. Uh, Sonova is a futurist, a strategist, a Web3 advisor, and most recently was also named the CEO of soon-to-be-launched Lore, the bespoke metaverse. And I'm sure you can tell us a little bit about that in a bit. So, yeah, I can't be more excited to have you on today um, on this series. Uh, you are such a creative powerhouse uh, that is leading this uh, industry forward into the new era of digital fashion. And, yeah leading our whole community. So thank you so much for, for being here with us today. I am excited to be here, especially on International Women's Day. So like <laughs> double hands up, high five for all the ladies yeah. out there and for all of those that all of those amazing people in our lives that support us each and every day. Yeah, perfect. So, um, yeah, I think we can start right away with a quick introduction. Um, maybe you can tell us a little bit something about your background and how you got in digital fashion. That would be great to start off. Yeah, so my background is really unique uh, to the space of technology because I didn't start in tech. Um, actually, there's a little story I'll, I'll share with you around the tech side, but um, I started with a desire to really help teens and young adults live happier lives and took a path of medicine and was pursuing my PhD in clinical psychology and had a divine download. Uh, if you know me, you know I use that often. Um, I had a divine download that I was going to help people through my love of fashion. And to set the stage for that uh, scenario, I was living in the middle of Connecticut, attending the University of Connecticut um, for grad school. And as you know, there's probably more cows than anything in Connecticut, um, at least on UConn's campus. And uh, so it wasn't surrounded by bustling fashion or art industry or community. And also being an immigrant from Jamaica and being the first generation to attend college here, education was always something that was super important. So for me to pivot as much as I did and leaving that very secure path that I was on for so long from clinical psychology to fashion was definitely a leap of faith. And so I finished up with my master's, went on to New York City and studied at FIT in New York, the Fashion Institute of Technology, and haven't been looked back since. And since graduating FIT, I've worked in interiors, I've worked in high-end real estate, on both on the residential side, commercial side, prior to relocating back to New York to launch my namesake label, Nova Lorraine. And Nova Lorraine uh, was a made to order and couture label and was really thrilled to be recognized early on for my creativity, my designs, um, winning Best Hot Couture Designer of the Year, being nominated by the Fashion Group International multiple times, getting in one of my favorite magazines of all time, Italian Vogue, and being featured in Essence on The View and many, many other really incredible opportunities and those highs brought equal lows as a creative entrepreneur, as a young mother uh, at the time without a real community that I was surrounded by that had walked this path before me. And so I was really learning as I went along. 
And that journey inspired me to launch Rain Magazine, which is a multimedia platform where I wanted to give back what I wished I had for myself and create something that really focused on the stories behind the founders and founders that were impacting their communities and looking at individuals that are at the cusp, at the future, at the edge of what they're doing in their industry. So Rain has always been about featuring the future of fashion, culture, and technology. And so I guess I've been a futurist for a long time, just didn't claim it until recently, but I do have a very uh, strong desire to be at the edge and see what's coming with a love of the past and appreciation for history to create the most present moment, the best experiences and products that can be offered to us today. So the cross section of both of those. And Rain has expanded into a podcast network called Pink Kangaroo, and that's Kangaroo with the U. Um, and we feature additional content for transformation for creative entrepreneurs or anyone that wants to improve their business or life. So we do inspirational content around personal growth and we do content around business growth and now transformational technology. So that's Pink Kangaroo. And that journey also led me to launch a book called Unleash Your Supernova, which is an extension of what I do with Rain Magazine. I've always yeah. had a desire to inspire creatives to never give up on their dreams. And how do you take an idea to execution? How do you increase creativity without burning out? How do you survive the journey of entrepreneurship, especially as an artist or creative? And that's what Unleash Your Supernova is about. It's a very prescriptive, easy read, actionable book that you can literally, first chapter, start making a difference in your life. And now I'm doing Web3 and emerging technology and fell down that rabbit hole thanks to Rain Magazine, thanks to being introduced to Bitcoin back yeah. in 2013 and then journeying up to present moment and you know moving my advisory and consulting services into this new emerging tech space. And then also choosing to build in this space, you know, as a designer, in the in the era prior to e-commerce moving into e-commerce and then now we're looking at immersive spaces ar ai and also you know launching a virtual company with a virtual magazine well before that was cool and normal and then bringing that into the future as well as we look at expanding how do you bring content and storytelling into the future and so that's the short of it i guess <laughs> Yeah, I mean, um, I'm, I'm sure a lot of those out there have the same impression. Like when I landed on your site, when I first uh, um, got directed to you, we got actually connected. Um, and uh, I, I just read through your all the steps you did in your career. And it's like so massive. There's so many milestones in there. You've already reached so many amazing goals. And, um, and you're also supporting people all around you like if you go through these points you can really you can really tell that that's part of who you are also and yeah. it's really interesting to see or to hear that you are actually you said you were like a self-taught entrepreneur you started out um, without this whole supportive system in place and I'm sure there's so many people out there um, that that feel the same way um, yeah, I'm really, really glad to, to have a, a mentor myself as well um, but I didn't I I that's Amy, by the way. I just lo love to highlight her at this point because International Women's Day, she's my rock and she's uh, uh, amazing. Um, but I didn't have at the beginning, the very beginning of my career, and it makes such a huge difference if you have these people on board. It's so important to build this ecosystem of supporters around you because it's it takes a village to, to move things, right? 100%. Yeah. And um, so um, in, in your career, I'm sure that you touched base with the one or other mentor or person in your life who gave you a special support. Maybe you can tell us a little bit about that and what it meant to you and, and how it really supported you. Yeah, my mentor came many years after I started my career, my fashion line and after I started Rain. So Rain was launched in 2007 and I met David Freshman, um, who has transitioned on, um, but I met David Freshman around 2012. So I was like flying solo for a long while um, before meeting him. And he was such a dynamic force in my life. And it's really unique when you have someone who's that cheerleader 
that is no matter what, they're like patting you on your back, they're putting you on your shoulder, they're running you through the crowd and they're like, you can do it. And they're and also you down, they bring you back up. <laughs> yes, yes, they could provide you such wisdom and guidance. And he was incredible. He was in the VC space and he saw the future of fashion and technology intersecting way back then. And he saw what I was doing with Rain being a digital and a physical magazine. So being one of the few digital publications in the space covering fashion, the future of fashion, culture and technology, and seeing what I was doing on the design side and saw the potential in me and took me under his wing. And he produced a lot of VC conferences on the East Coast. So he would invite me to attend the conferences to learn that side of the business. You know, what are the elements? of getting funded and you know what are the what do these pitches look like in person and how do you engage with vcs that are interested in finding those next great gems in technology and so he was part of that dot-com boom and saw the potential and possibility in the fashion industry and at the time a lot of people weren't paying attention to fashion it's such a traditional space mm -hmm. and unless you're in it it's hard to understand the business models and how you're going to really secure um, financial success, you know, at scale. And he saw that. And so it was a joy to work with them for the short time that I did. He passed in 2014 unexpectedly of cancer, but he left a legacy and he supported artists, he supported creatives and, and he had, and he had such, like I said, wisdom to share and knowledge to share. And it was so generous with it, helped so many startups along the way. And so that experience without a mentor and then having a mentor and then not having a mentor <laughs> um, was very unique. And it's something that I've been very intentional about, you know, when I've always brought on interns in my organizations and really pour into them. Any new team member, I pour into them. And even if you're not in any of my organizations, if you are needing guidance, uh, you know, a thing, you know, something pointing you in the right direction, I love to do that. And it's part of the reason why I probably speak as much as I do and join these stages, because I do love sharing knowledge and wisdom. Yeah. And if you have the right information and take action is an empowering and being an immigrant, you know, from a foreign country, from a small island in the Caribbean, you know, education here in this country and being able to take advantage of that was one way forward was an opportunity to open doors and education comes in many forms and it doesn't have to be your traditional way either. And so I'm a lifelong learner. I love to self-educate. I'll look at videos. I'll, look, I'll listen to podcasts. I'll read books. Yeah. I'll go to conferences. I'll sit on webinars, however I can get the information. And I think that's what's so exciting is that we have so many channels now and mediums on how to disseminate and consume this information and this knowledge. But I would say for anyone that's listening, I would highly recommend putting out there in the universe, putting, <laughs> writing it down in your journal, posting about it, actively mm -hmm. looking for a mentor because it really makes a difference. And sometimes it's just that emotional support that you need. But if you're able to find someone that can also guide you with their wisdom and their network and open that network to you, then that, that speaks volumes as well. Absolutely. I can't agree more. And, you know, um, it's like you said, knowledge can be really empowering. Just someone who shows you a shortcut, like you don't have to go up through the hard direction, right? Someone who's experienced and can, can, can lead you a little bit along the way. And also in our industry, like, I mean, all that you're doing on LinkedIn, you're sharing knowledge, you're, you're, you're educating people. That's also empowering. That's so important. Um, so yeah, it's really good to hear. And also mentoring goes in both directions, right? Like we have maybe mentors now, but we're also supporting other people. And, um, it, it's not a one lane, uh, story. Uh, it, as soon as you mentor people, they also have, uh, get, get, get that, that inspiration to go out and support people. I feel like it's a, it's a wildfire. It gets running and, um, I'd love to see that moving faster, especially in our digital fashion space. Definitely. Yeah. 100%. So, um, yeah, but let's um, maybe uh, take this point to switch over to our actual topic for today, because that's already touching base with it. Mentoring is maybe one point that could solve the issue we're talking about. So today we're speaking about humanity and representation in digital fashion and in Web3. And we really want to look at, as we build this new frontier right now, 
how do we an, increase um, women's prison in digital fashion and Web3? And how do we look at and solve these underlining issues? Um, we're talking about women because it's International Women's Day, but of course you can take that also wider to a wider audience. It's not just women. Um, but just to start out, um, I, I don't know if you guys maybe came across it, but BCG had a um, research paper they just put out. Uh, let me just pull up this little visual um, just to show you guys the state where we are right now. So um, yeah, according to this research, which was done 2022 last year, um, yeah, we have only 13% of Web3 founding teams that include women, and only seven of the founders are actually seven percent of the founders are actually women. Um, so if you look at the funding teams, it's even three percent that's all women. That's such a small number. And I don't, I mean, you've been a, a around this business a longer than me, so I'm 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 just joining as a, a entrepreneur. I just founded like two years ago about, and I knew the numbers probably would be small, but I didn't think they would be that tiny. So this is really um, eye opening for me and really left a huge impression on me. And um, so maybe we can talk about like how this all came together or what what we think the the barriers of entry actually are for women. Maybe we can jump in right there. Yeah, I love that. Those charts, actually, um, the pie charts that you just shared, because it gives a strong visual and the sense of urgency. And so, you know, I fell into the rabbit hole of all things Web3, maybe about a year and a half, almost two years now. And it's one thing to educate about it, speak on it, advise on it, and but it's another to build in the space. And when you're on the ground, you're able to see through a lot of the, the smoking mirrors, you're able to see some of the roots of how a lot of projects got started and, you know, are those going to really stick around or not based on the principles of how they were initiated. And then you see the, at least for me, my personal experience was seeing the, the need, the drastic need for education, because I think awareness is a part of why you have such few women in the space and then you have access. And when I see these white papers, which is the business plan of a lot of these technologies and looking at the founding team members, and I do this often or when individuals approach me to consult or advise them and I do my research and look at the teams and I'm often disappointed that there's not more diversity. And yes, today is International Women's Day and we are highlighting and celebrating all women around the world, but it does go beyond that. You know, I'm a woman, I'm also a woman of color and I'm in the creative arts. Like it's like, it's like, it's like continue to niche down. Yeah. And, um, and so we need more diverse voices at the table. And well, how do you do that? Well, you look at some of the sources of the issue and, and do I believe everyone is out to not have women on their teams to keep women outside the house where they can't get into the party? I don't think everyone is building from that perspective, but if they're educated about these numbers, like you just shared, then they could take action and they can make a difference and they can be intentional in mm -hmm. terms of if you, if you can't find the talent pool, which there is a growing talent pool that's in this space, then you could train up your talent. You can recruit and you can train, you can create mentorship programs. We were just talking about that. You can have apprenticeship programs. You can have grants. You can support other institutions that are training individuals in this space and create that funnel for women to join your team. But then when they join, are you supporting them? Are you paying them fairly? Are you continuing to educate them? And so it's not just this one little checkbox. It's a true commitment for long-term success that I think we have to be intentional about. And then also looking at our younger women who are having these conversations with individuals in middle school, they're not too young to hear about technology and what's happening. Well, they're not too young to consume it because we see a lot of companies taking advantage of that audience yeah, from a consumption yeah, standpoint. I agree. So let's that's look earlier. Them. Right, right. So let's look at them beyond just consumers and let's educate them, let's recruit them, let's support them, let's mentor them all the way up. And I've seen it in other industries. So why can't it be done in Web3? So let's start young as well. And let's create this pipeline. Let's create this 
this community of mentors. You know, when this conversation, we, we had a few uh, uh, talk a few weeks ago, we were fired up and we're like, how can we change the world? How can we make yeah. a difference? <laughs> And since that conversation, mentorship has come up at least in three other talks that I've done. Mm -hmm. And so I've made a personal commitment to bring on at least one new woman that I don't know yet into the space. And since I, uh, last week, I'm working with three mentees. And, and it's really just putting it out there. It's just being intentional, wanting that, mm -hmm. and creating the difference. And it starts there. So those of us that are taking the journey, bring someone along with you. you bring a friend, you can learn together. And so I think another issue is around funding. We talked about access, we talked about education. Yes. Let's talk about money. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, it's a part of it. <laughs> it takes money to bring these ideas to life and time. Mm. So if you're not in a full-time position or a part-time position, you need to support yourself and or your family until your idea is birthed to a point where it can sustain itself financially. So we need more individuals supporting the cause, supporting the ideas, the creators, the innovators, the builders, the educators that are creating these platforms to educate as well. And so I think a lot of times we have these conversations, we're speaking to the choir, we need to take action. And this was something that was brought up on a Twitter spaces um, hosted by hashtag web three. And thank you, Dr. Christina Yang for helping put it together where we were talking beyond just having the conversation in this community, but let's each of us take action. Do we know a VC? You know, maybe these VC funds can bring more women on their boards, bring more women into the conversations, ask them what products do they care about? What ideas do they have? What are the needs that other female founders may have? So beyond just writing a check, the VCs can also support the success of those women as well micro lending grants non-equity funding you know let's give these women a start where they're not so stressed from the very beginning on paying back dividends and profits and so i think those are some areas that we can look at to increase equity and i think that goes beyond just women i think those are universal issues but um, as we're now on international women's day <laughs> we're highlighting women yeah and it is something that i've experienced along my journey and, you know, I am a person that always looks at the glass half full. And I've been, you know, taken by surprise many a times where I think that the world is a fair and equitable place. And then these issues hit me square in my face as well. And so I don't want to speak from a, a perspective of naivete, but I also want to speak in intention with a positive outlook. And I think these, this is the most I've heard these conversations have had you know having these conversations since i started my journey as a creative entrepreneur and so that in and of itself shows progress that there's so many of these rooms and talks not just on this day but well prior to this day leading up to today and will continue into the future and that's progress and that will create impact that will have its ripple effect and i'm looking forward to see what transpires in the coming months and years absolutely and uh, it's like you said, it's um, it's it's not only getting them in, women or, or other groups into position where they can actually thrive and evolve and 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 be creative. It's about also when they're in that position, securing that path for them as well and enabling them to grow. Um, if you are if you have a company and you have you have women in place, I love that point that you said that it doesn't stop by bringing them in. You have to continue to uh, make sure that you have the, the 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 structure in place that they can actually grow, because there's this one TED talk I heard about, um, like about the uh, the the term of the glass ceiling that women come across sometimes. Like if you have a glass ceiling, you keep going against it, even if you remove that glass ceiling, those those structures that 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 keep um, yeah groups from from growing and involving their skills. Even if you remove that glass, they, they won't try anymore because they, they ran against it too often. So that's a, a nice analogy that that even though um, you really have to also um, take them along on the journey and bring um, empower these people and have conversations and really um, yeah voice voice the issues and bring them to the table. Um, yeah, so I mean, there were so many great points that you just mentioned there. I'm just trying to go through all yeah. of them. Um, 
Um, to all you guys listening, um, maybe you guys can share which point like was most impressionable for you guys or what you think is really important out there. We'd love to hear it in, your, in the comments because I see some already coming in here. Um, also, if you have any questions, we'll get to that in a bit as well. Um, uh, to, if you have any questions for Nova, for the both of us, feel free to share them in the comments. We'll, we'll bring them in. But we do have, uh, yeah, some some people. This is Amy, by the way. Um, Amy Paquette, my mentor. She's always here supporting me, even on this day. Oh, so uh, super nice to see you're on here. And we have also a comment from Nicole Steele. Um, yeah, it's it's just really, um, yeah, it's 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 a special day that everyone talks about these topics. Um, but we should really um, keep this in mind, like 365 days a year. Um, we shouldn't just bring these up just on one day. Um, it should be an ongoing topic. So, but let's just have a look shortly at the, yeah, the, um, um, like how we can, I mean, you got, you, you basically brought a lot of examples how we can actually solve these issues. Um, do you guys out there have any others you'd like to add maybe and share with us? We'd love to also hear your thoughts um, on that point. For example, um, measuring everything is a point that I think is also really important because as soon as you have data, as soon as you have numbers that that really address an issue, that's when you can really use it and and do something about it. Right? It's really good and really important to measure everything in this in this uh, in this topic to make sure that you, yeah, you you can bring also um, you you can voice these issues with the with the backing behind it. Um, and yeah, it's like you said, also having women represented on investment teams, because I think we had a conversation earlier. Um, you also mentioned um, it's just normal if you're if you're a, a woman and uh, or and you see another woman, you have this connection to her and you want to help. And that's maybe also the reason why there's so little women funded, because there's a lot of men on these team. Um, or it's not that diverse also in, 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 in other groups as well. Um, like we said, we're taking this also bigger than just International Women's Day. Um, but yeah, um, you relate to what what um, what what person is similar to you. That's just the nature of the of the human being, and uh, giving them uh, a space on the on the investment boards will definitely make a big difference there as well. So I know there's there's a lot of women out there already um, highly involved, um, and you're also um, highly involved in that topic as well. So that's great to see. And yeah. Um, so we have, uh, uh, let me see, oh, it's, it's uh, about a half hour now. So we had our, our session um, for 30 minutes. That's about the time that we usually have it. Um, maybe we could um, end this with a short, uh, like outlook on the future of what, what you would hope would happen in the next, like, let's say um, one or two years. What, what would be your goal? What would you love to see happen or what goal would you like to meet? Ooh, well, what if going back to your pie chart, the big blue <laughs> that's representing 80% shrunk by 50%. Could we get there in two years? I think we could. I think that if we have so many of these founders, just imagine the 87% of the founders now, if 50% of them decided to bring a woman on the leadership team, there you go. And I also think we should challenge our founders. The VCs should challenge these founders to find a female and someone that is going to add value. And you know what? If you're not able to find someone in your immediate circle, there's so many female communities that and women are looking for opportunities to contribute. And so maybe going into those communities and seeking them out. And then the other pieces creating an, an educational funnel to bring more women in. So I would love for the 87% to be a little more balanced, where we have more women achieving their dreams, being funded, bringing impact, you know, engaging with teams. We know the advantages of what female leadership brings. And I think that we can't do this in a silo. It's not us talking to us. We need everyone committed for more balance. Right. If we see the numbers and the research, as you mentioned, Marie, the data, it says that with female leadership, you're going to have more engaged teams. You're going to have less turnover. You're going to have more impactful, sustainable solutions and innovations. You're going to have a higher bottom line as it relates to revenue.
So why are the numbers what they are? And I do feel it's like attract like and like, and it's not, you know, everyone is against, you know, having women in, in these yeah. roles and positions or individuals of color or more diverse voices, but it's just being intentional and paying attention to the numbers, being aware. And that's where education comes in. And that's what you're delivering today. You're bringing the knowledge forward so individuals can ask those questions and they can provide environments or workshops or support um, or teams where women can join. And I do speak loudly to the funders that are providing the checks for a lot of these ideas to come to fruition. I challenge you. I challenge you to bring on a woman, mentor a woman, teach a woman, fund a woman, and then have her do the same and pass it on. Because the more we bring women to the table, the more women that will be supported and funded by women. That's what I love that that call out there. That's really great. And it's really also, like you said, it's important to say, um, I'm also fully on board that no one's really doing this on purpose. It's just uh, the, the structure is somehow set up uh, is a little off. And um, it's I know so many um, uh, women and men supporting this initiative as well. Um, that it's it's uh, it's the common good for everyone. Um, companies will be more innovative if you have a diverse team set up. Um, and it's about you want to keep these talents, right? You you really want to keep them on board as well. So that's also a really important point for brands. They want to make sure they they keep them and and, and create a path for them to grow. And um, I mean, at the end of the day, um, for me personally, I really think it's about also creating um, your very own um, path that's very individual to you because, um, yeah, the um, it can be very, it can differentiate very much from person to person what success really means. And um, this empowerment really helps you create the life that you want, um, create... Uh, uh, a surrounding that that you strive in, um, going after your passion and your purpose. That's a big thing behind, for me, founding World of Mesh, definitely. Um, and that's that's something that I also want to just share out there. It's not like, like you have to follow a path that's given to you. You can choose your own. And it might be rocky at the beginning, but if you have your supportive system in place, it's going to make a huge difference and you'll get through it. I'm an example of that, I'll tell you. Absolutely. I mean, we heard your story. <laughs> yeah, I think the mentorship <laughs> goes so far. Your support circle goes so far, but that's so true. I, we all have a unique path, and I think it's just paying attention to that calling inside of us, and which is what I did. And, and that may change uh, as well as you take your journey. And that's I had no idea that I'd be steeped in Web3. But what I do love is I do love to inspire, empower, and educate. And this is the space that I've been called to right now. So I think it's so important to follow that, that inner voice that's within you and to surround yourself with people that support you and to have that cheerleader in the corner is what I call it, your mentor or mentors. Um, hey, if you need a team of mentors, let's go. <laughs> yeah. And you know what? I just uh, found a, I just saw the question um, we have over here. Um, which I think it, we answered it just right now. Hi, can you share what you do in the very negative moments? Being an entrepreneur is not always easy. How do you boost your uh, reliance and confidence? Um, practical tips, that would be great. So I think, do you have anything to add to what we already yeah, said? Yeah, I would love to add to that. And thank you for the question. Um, I think it's a really great thing to bring up because one of the things we don't talk about enough as women and as women founders or creators or business um, owners and leaders is balance. And I think that, you know, the majority of businesses are small businesses, right? We have some really great fortune 100, 500s <laughs> out there, but the majority of businesses around the world are small businesses with smaller teams. And sometimes you're wearing multiple hats. And in the beginning, it may not be easy from a financial sustainability standpoint, and so what do you do? How do you keep that? Like, so you mentioned that confidence and how do you keep going? And, you know, part of it is the mentorship and then the team, you know, who in your family, which friends, they don't have to be in the same industry that you're in, but who really believes in you and speaks positively? Because it's so important to have that energy around you. There's enough challenges that will lie in front of you, let alone having a naysayer saying, oh, why are you doing that? That's not going to work. You know, yeah. don't bother. No. Get rid of all those, at least for the moment, um, and surround yourself with more individuals 
that see the positive in what you're doing and how you can achieve that. That's one thing. The other thing okay. that I talk about a lot in my book, Unleash Your Supernova, is mindfulness, being mindful, being intentional, paying attention to just clearing your mind, taking breaks during the day. You know, a lot of us are on Zoom often, sitting in a chair for eight hours, and research shows that's as bad as smoking, like sitting for long periods of time. Just think about that. So taking breaks, give yourself those moments throughout the day, in between meetings, in between projects, to take a walk, do an activity that you think is fun or creative, doodle, journal, make up a song, you know, plant a flower, eat your favorite, like I love berries. So eat your favorite <laughs> fruit, you know, take a, yeah. take a moment to reward yourself and do something that's not work related. You know, do some stretching, five minutes of breathing, yoga. There's so many things that'll bring you into the present moment that'll decrease anxiety, beat stress away, but then also increase creativity. Because when you're more creative and more imaginative, problem solving becomes easy. You're able to see the path through. You're able to know who to call, what email to send, what to put in that email, what post to post. And then your efforts are more impactful. So I really stress being mindful and giving back to yourself, pouring into you with the moments of R&R, &R, with, with time during the day that have nothing to do with work so you can recharge and replenish. And I encourage everyone, if you haven't already taken on something creative, because we are all creative beings and it expresses itself in many ways, and to find something creative that you do each day, whatever that creativity is. It could be through the fine arts, it could be through tinkering, mm -hmm. it could be through something with using your hands, but do something creative each day because that, with, without even knowing it, that also recharges your soul. 100%. Um, I think you nailed it with that, with that answer. Um, it's really, um, yeah, it, it, the everyday life can be overwhelming, but you have to remember that you can set your own priorities. Um, you're, you're in charge of your life and, uh, um, you you have more control than you usually think you do in, in these areas. So uh, I love what I love every every point you just mentioned that feeds right into that. So yeah, I mean just to finish off our session then, um, uh, Nicole just also shared in my experience, women are the holders uh, of one of the most valuable assets, intuition, and that's also a really good point. They can always listen to your gut feeling. That's something that's guided me all my way. I'm sure it's guided you as well, Nova. It's really a good point. Oh yeah, I could I could speak days on intuition. We're gonna have to do another <laughs> another interview around yeah. that. Thank you, Nicole. That's um, really nice. That's a really nice way. Um, I think to end the session then. So um, yeah, if you guys don't have any questions anymore, um, I just want to. I wrap it up with a huge thank you to you, Nova, for joining today. It's an absolute pleasure and honor to have you on to share all this great advice with everyone listening. I'm 100% sure that everyone's taking something away uh, from, from this episode. It's been so much valuable content that you share with us. And mm -hmm. yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing your next steps and uh, um, which direction you'll be moving because it's really exciting. I appreciate you. And if for whatever reason, if you haven't had a chance to get your question answered, you can DM me on LinkedIn. I'm happy to continue the conversation. Thank you so much, Marie, for having me. And again, creating this platform for those of us that are in fashion, in this digital world that we're all venturing into, and then also having it today on such an important day for us to recognize women all over the world. So I want to thank you so much for having me today on such an important day and creating this in this platform that you have for us in the creative industry. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure. And yeah, it was perfect timing. It just fell on a Wednesday, International Fat, uh, Women's Day. So happy International Women's Day to all you guys. I hope you'll celebrate with a nice drink tonight. Um, cheers to everyone. And yeah, we'll see you guys on the next episode. Bye. Bye-bye.